Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the second lecture on our muscular system unit. Today, we're going to go over the anatomy of striated muscles. Remember that striated muscles was your, was your cardiac muscles and your skeletal muscles, not your smooth muscles. But first, we're going to go over just, just a little bit muscle, nerve, and blood supply. So remember, muscles contract. That means they shorten in length, and when they contract... That is what causes your limbs and your body to move. And for that to happen, these muscles need to be stimulated by an action potential from a motor neuron. Now, as these nerves, these motor neurons branch out, each motor neuron is going to innervate. Innervate just means connect to multiple muscle cells. And they do this at a, at a point called the neuromuscular junction. Junction means comes together. So this is where the neurons and the muscle tissue come together in the neuromuscular junction. Now each muscle cell or muscle fiber is supplied by one motor neuron. And also, of course, it's going to be in contact with one or two capillaries. That's what's bringing the blood supply, the oxygen. Those capillaries are also going to remove waste from the muscles like carbon dioxide and the capillaries are also going to bring things that the muscles need especially oxygen and glucose glucose in the presence of oxygen with mitochondria they're going to convert that glucose into ATP energy and as you're going to see in later lectures it's that ATP energy that allows the muscles to contract which allows for the body to move and remember that those Nerve fibers, the neurons, and those capillaries are found within the endomyseum. Remember the endomyseum was that sheath of connective tissue that surrounds each individual muscle cells. All right, so now the muscle tissue histology. Basically, what is muscle tissue, what are muscle cells actually made out of? Well, the first thing is called myofibers. Or muscle fibers that's basically just the the muscle cells themselves they're cylindrical so they're kind of like a tube the next thing is called the sarcolemma now if you remember from regular bio biology all cells are surrounded from their environment by a cell membrane or a plasma membrane and it's the same thing with muscle cells just their plasma membrane or their cell membrane is called the sarcolemma now, it's important to know that the sarcolemma is not the same as the endomyseum. The endomyseum is connective tissue that is located superficial or outside the sarcolemma. The sarcolemma is a cell membrane which is made of phospholipids, which is mainly made up of lipids or fats. So the endomyseum is located superficial or outside of that cell membrane of the muscle cell itself. Now, much like a regular cell, a regular cell has its cytoplasm. Muscle cells have what's called a sarcoplasm, which is just basically the fluid within the cell. It contains many mitochondria. If you remember from regular bio, mitochondria is what converts glucose, which is a simple sugar, and it converts it into ATP energy, and ATP is what can be used as an immediate source of energy, and it's ATP which allows your muscles to contract to allow movement. And the last thing on this slide is called the sarcoplasmic reticulum. Once again, if you remember from regular bio, you had a rough and a smooth endoplasmic reticulum. Well, basically this organelle within muscle cells, its main function is to store calcium. And when that muscle is gonna contract, when you're gonna, when you're gonna want that muscle to, to provide some sort of movement, it's going to release that calcium to cause the muscle to contract and to, and to promote movement. And a couple more terms. The next one is called a transverse tubules. Sometimes they're called T-tubules. And basically all that is is extensions of the sarcolemma or the cell membrane deep into the muscle cell itself. And these, the sarcolemma has a lot of ion channels and just like ion channels in a neuron cause the action potential to propagate along the axon these transverse tubules 
allow the action potentials to, to go into the cell much, much more rapidly. So it allows the muscle to contract more in rhythm and more rapidly because those transverse or T-tubules actually go into the muscle fibers themselves. And the next one, myoglobin. You've probably heard of hemoglobin, which is uh, the protein that's in blood, which allows it to carry oxygen. Well, myoglobin does basically the same thing. It stores oxygen, and muscle cells and all cells need oxygen for what's called aerobic uh, respiration. And when they use oxygen to convert glucose, they can make way more ATP than if there's not any oxygen present. So the myoglobin is what, what helps store oxygen for the mitochondria to convert glucose into ATP. And remember, it is ATP that can be used as an immediate source of energy. Glucose cannot. It must be converted to ATP before it can be used for the muscle to contract. And the last little component of these skeletal muscles or cardiac muscles are called myofibrils. And these have both thin and thick fibers. They're proteins. And these are the, these are the parts of the muscle that are actually going to cause it to contract. And we're going to see more of that in pictures coming up here in just a second. And here's a little cross-section of a muscle fiber or a muscle cell. Remember, it is surrounded by the cell membrane called the sarcolemma. Now remember, the, the sarcolemma is a cell membrane. It's made of phospholipids, just like a regular cell. Now, superficial or outside of that is going to be the endomyseum. And the endomyseum is not made of phospholipids. It is dense, irregular connective tissue. So that is going to be outside of the sarcolemma. Uh, you also have the sarcoplasm. Remember, that is just the fluid within the muscle cell itself, very similar to cytoplasm within a cell. And most importantly, it contains these myofibrils. Now, these are chains of proteins, and it is these guys right here that allow the muscles to contract and relax. And we'll go over that in a later lesson. They also contain satellite cells. Now, these cells are when your muscles get damaged. So, if you have trauma, if you tear a muscle, it is these satellite cells that are going to repair that, that damage with scar tissue, and they're also going to construct new myofibrils new thin and thick filaments which allow for muscle contraction. Once again, we'll go over that a little bit more later on. And just a little more up-close view of a transverse section of a muscle fiber. So you remember you have this sarcoplasmic reticulum. All you're going to need to know is that's what stores calcium ions. So when those calcium ions are released from the sarcoplasmic reticulum, that's what's going to cause the muscle to contract or shorten in length. You also have here, probably the most important part of a muscle is the myofibrils, those protein strings, which is made of both thin and thick filaments. We're going to go over those here in a second. And it's those things which actually allow the muscles to change in, in, in length, to contract or extend. And also don't forget the T-tubules or transverse tubules. That's an extension of the sarcolemma which is basically just the cell membrane. So it is these T-tubules, which will go inside, deep inside of the muscle tissue itself, which allows the action potential, or that allow that muscle to contract much quicker. It allows that signal to go from the very outside of the muscle to very deep very quickly because these, the message can be sent through those T-tubules. And last thing here, you can see this is a mitochondrion. Did that in regular bio. Remember, this is the powerhouse of the cell. Muscles need a lot of energy. So they're, the, they're what's going to take glucose using oxygen and convert it into ATP energy, adenosine triphosphate, which is the energy that's actually used for muscle contraction and muscle movement. All right, so we had the sarcolemma. In the sarcoplasm. Well, now we have the functional unit of striated muscle. Remember, striated muscle has stripes. It appears to have stripes. And the functional unit is called a sarcomere. Now, these sarcomeres and their thick and thin filaments, which gives 
cardiac and skeletal muscles its stripes or its striations. Now thick filaments are called myosin. And you can see those right here, these red bars right here. Those are the those are the thick filaments called myosin. Now you can also see the thin filaments. They're a lot skinnier. They're right here. These guys right here, those are the thin filaments, and those are called actin. So the thick filaments are called myosin. Those are those red bars that are in the middle. And then these thinner lines on the outside, those are actin. Those are the thin filaments. And it is these patterns of thick and thin filaments, the myosin and actin, which gives striated muscles its stripes. Now, as you can see, a sarcomere extends from what's called one Z-disc or Z-line to another Z-disc or Z-line. And the striations are caused by patterns created. So, you'll have what's a dark, what's called the A-band, right here in green. This would be the A-band because it contains those thick myosin filaments. And outside of that, you're going to have what's called the I-band. So the I-band out here and out here, that's not, going to take, that's not going to contain the thick myosin filaments, but it's going to contain, contain the thin actin filaments. So the I-band out here, this is going to be the light regions of the striated muscle, and the A-band located in here in the inside with the thick filaments, that's going to be the dark regions of the striated muscle. All right, so I'm going to try to do my best to show you how this works on this slide. It's not, I don't have the best pictures to work with, but remember, sarcomeres are made of both thin and thick filaments. Remember, thin filaments are made of actin, and we're going to see the thin filaments over here in yellow. So that's the actin. Those are the thin filaments. Here, this little thicker line in red, that is the thick filament made of myosin. Now you can see what the thin filaments or actin is made of, mostly actin, also a protein called troponin, another protein called tropomyosin. Now, myosin kind of looks like a golf, golf club. They have these little heads or cross bridges that stick off of it like that. And when they're allowed to, they will bind to the actin and pull it that way, which will actually shorten the muscle. But tropomyosin here, this protein, it blocks. It does not allow these little heads, these cross bridges, to attach to the actin to pull it this way to contract the muscle. But when there's calcium ions, when there's enough calcium ions and ATP present, the calcium ions will bind to the troponin, and that causes the tropomyosin to change its shape. When it does, these cross bridges of the myosin, the thick filament, are able to grab on to the thin filament, the actin, and it's able to pull it along this way. And that's what causes a muscle contraction. And each time one of these, the heads or the cross bridges, pulls it along, it takes ATP energy to move it along even further, to slide the thick filament in between the two thin filaments. Myosin binding sites, the sites where these cross bridges right here are going to bind to the thin filaments, the actin, they're blocked. They're blocked by the tropomyosin. But... Once calcium ions bond to the troponin, that causes tropomyosin to change its shape. So this is the tropomyosin right here. It changes its shape, thus allowing the head, or the, you know, the little heads of these, these little golf clubs, the cross bridges, to grab on and pull the thick filament in between the two thin filaments. And remember, the actin or the thin filaments are bound together at, at the end here called the Z-line. Remember, it's from Z-line to Z-line, which makes up a sarcomere. All right, so here's a little closer view of the myosin or the thick filament. 
that of course is the thick red strand of protein here in the middle. You have the thin filaments of the actin out here in yellow. Now you can see here are the cross bridges or the heads. Remember, you have troponin on the thin filaments. You also have tropomyosin. The tropomyosin blocks. They don't allow these cross bridges to attach to the actin. But if there's calcium ions, if the calcium ions, Ca2+, attach to the troponin, it causes the tropomyosin to change its shape. Now that allows these cross bridges to attach on both sides. And it's going to pull these two filaments against each other. So this, the thick filament will go this way and the thin filament will move that way. And that's what a muscle contraction is. And remember the actin fibers are held together at what's called the Z discs on each side. So there's a Z disc over here. There's another one over here. And the thick filaments, the myosin, they're bound together at what's called the M-line proteins. M-line. All right, so before you freak out too much, just remember this lecture is really not about the muscle contraction. I just wanted to introduce it to you earlier so you can kind of start to get it a little bit. But try to understand what makes up a sarcomere. So remember, we have the Z-discs. That's where the thin actin fibers are attached right here at the Z-discs. You have the A-band, which is the dark regions in striated or striped, striped muscle. A-band would be right here. And this is where you have the thick myosin fibers. You also have the I-band. And this is the light area of striated muscle, which is composed of only the thin actin fibers. You also have you have what's called the H zone, and that's, only, that's where only thick filaments, that myosin fibers, are located, and that would be right in here. So this is where there's no actin, there's no thin filaments. That's where there's only thick myosin fibers found. That's the H zone. And then finally, you have the M, M line, enter the sarcomere, and that's where the thick filaments, the myosin, are attached to each other, and it's made of a protein called titan. All right, so now finally a good picture that I can kind of do some stuff with. So once again, here's a sarcomere. Now, remember, sarcomeres go from Z-disc or Z-line to Z-line. And that is where those thin filaments, those actin fibers, are bonded right here to the, to the Z-discs. Now, it's important to know that this is not one muscle cell right here. One muscle cell can contain hundreds, thousands, hundreds of thousands of sarcomeres. So one sarcomere is not one muscle cell. Now here you can see the A band right here with the, with the thick myosin fibers, which is going to be the dark regions of striated muscles. And then you can see here would be the I bands, which is going to be the light shades of the striated muscles. So that's what gives it its stripes. And now here you can see here are the thin filaments, the actin filaments on both sides. You can see it also over here. Remember they're attached at the Z line or the Z discs on both sides. So this would be the two ends of a sarcomere. You can see the thick filament, the myosin right here in red. Remember here is Titan. You can see it here, you can see it here, and also tightens what creates the end line, which bonds the thick filaments together. And now here on the myosin, the thick filaments, you can see the heads, the cross bridges. Now remember, in the thin filaments, there's troponin and there's tropomyosin. If there's calcium ions... If the calcium ions are able to bond to the troponin, it causes the tropomyosin to change shape. That allows these cross bridges to grab on to the thin filament, the actin, and it allows it to pull the fibers in between each other. So it's going to pull the thick fibers in between the thin filaments, 
the myosin in between the actin, and that's what causes the muscle to contract or shorten in length. All right, so here we can see two different sarcomeres. Remember, sarcomeres go from Z-disc to Z-disc. So there's one right there. And then here's the next one, Z-disc to Z-disc. And you can see this is striated because you can clearly see you have here this I-band, which is made up of only thin filaments, the actin. And then you can see the A-band in here, which is made up of both thin filaments, the actin, and also the thick filaments, the myosin. So that is what gets striated muscles, their stripes or striations. All right, I hope you understood most of this. If not, we'll have more lectures and we'll have more activities. So hopefully you'll be able to get this and we'll be able to do well on our next exam. All right, thank you for listening and I'll talk to you next time.